Hey gamers, get ready for a deep dive into the heart of a scorching gaming debate. Is Xbox really sidelining its diehard fans? Brace yourself because I've got a perspective that might shake up your gaming worldview. This is The Medicine. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, and Hard Knock Digital Culture. Back again with another episode of The Medicine. And this is a special video that we've titled Xbox may be ignoring their most diehard fans, and I don't blame them. But before we get into this one, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please. So in order for me to make this as digestible for you as possible. We're gonna break this up into a few parts. So let's start with part number one. And that is how the, tra tra the traditional hardcore fan base helps a platform, all right? It's gonna all make sense by the time we get to the end of this. So bear with me, my friends, here we go. So let's talk the console wars. And I, I like talking about the console war in its purest form, not the whole fanboy stuff, right? And in its purest form, it's not a clash of simply fan-based gaming ideologies. More so, it's the result of competing platforms providing the best gaming experience via their hardware and software that happens to fuel our gaming passions. Exclusive AAA games are vital in this arena. They aren't just titles. Their soul stirs the adhesive binding, you may call it, to dedicated fans and what systems we tend to flock to, right? So how do these hardcore fans influence casual gamers? Spoiler alert, it's a community building affair. Ever felt like the cool kid in school or elsewhere? Well, whether you've done so by bear witness or being one yourself, that cool kid in our community is the hardcore gamer. Hardcore gamers usually wear the crown, setting trends and influencing the gaming vibe. They often lead the charge in your gaming clan, deciding the next gen path for even for the Call of Duty faithful. No wonder PlayStation's success rides on the coattails of these gaming trendsetters. With that said, in contrast, let's look into the ineffectiveness of the Xbox slash gamer relationship. So again, contrast that with Xbox's approach to its fan base. They're fed enough to keep the fanboy fire burning, but fall short as beacons guiding more gamers to Xbox and their ecosystem. Enter to this discussion Game Pass, a game changer risking loss leading versus the full potential of a la carte purchases. The struggle? Well, Xbox's staunch gamers don't grasp the concept and the steps needed for the subscription service to thrive in such an era like this. Its survival is one that puts a temporary pause to full exclusivity, particularly after a big purchase. Then once quickly recouped, entices more gamers to its platforms with said exclusivity at the right time. So therefore, because stuff like that has happened recently at not the right time, such a missed opportunity for long-term significant growth was just witness. Where was it witness? Well, that brings us to our next part, the Bethesda deal fallout. Now, what am I talking about the Bethesda deal fallout? Well, again, I'm not saying the Bethesda deal was bad. There were elements of it that is causing heartburn and will for a long time for Xbox and its intended plans. So again, enter the gripping thriller of the Bethesda deal. The impact of the fan base on this move led to missed opportunities and a critical hip hiccup in the Activision Blizzard buyout. What am I talking about? Well, regulators raised their eyebrows at the deal, forcing Microsoft into a 10 year multiple commitment, sacrificing exclusivity for financial compliance. How? By not timing platform exclusivity when feasible right a huge part of the regulators the big three the eu the cma and the ftc putting a halt to the deal's finalization was based upon cloud gaming 
Now, what did the cloud gaming platforms, particularly Stadia, who was much most affected by events by Xbox, what were they whining and complaining about? Well, they were complaining about Xbox getting ABK games and leaving those critical games exclusive, quote unquote, like they did with the Bethesda deal, right? Thus, that forced Microsoft into 10 year multi plat commitments, sacrificing their ability for exclusivity at a later time more under their control in order to have compliance with the regulators. Wow. And because of that, they are taking a hit financially because can you imagine if at the right time they were able to have these exclusive deals instead of recouping only 70% of their purchases of ABK or whatever, if they could make the, the games exclusive at the right time, they would get 100% of those purchases off their own ecosystem. But again, timing is everything here. So with that, because they face regulatory issues with the Activision Blizzard deal, partly as a result of what happened with the Bethesda deal, as a result of the more rabid fan base saying, no, you gotta make this exclusive now. It's a tangled web of choices that surely influenced the platform's future and why they may be doing some of these things that are causing a lot of heartburn with gamers today. With that said, to better help understand that, we gotta go to the business model and the shift in alternatives, right? We gotta talk about that. As we wrap up here, Xbox isn't just changing, it's transitioning. From critiquing Game Pass to exploring an exclusive ecosystem, there's more to the Xbox story. So in conclusion, is Xbox truly ignoring its diehard fans or are the strategic reasons behind these decisions more than just, hey, we gotta be exclusive now. You know what I mean? Let's, let, let's try to battle Sony and give you fodder for Twitter. With significant purchases leaving them financially challenged, Xbox is navigating a complex gaming landscape. And quite frankly, in placating to the rabid fan base, they might have missed a golden opportunity to elevate their subscription service and ecosystem by, like I said before, by executing the exclusivity hat trick at the ideal time. Here are my closing thoughts. Insanity is repeating the same actions and expecting different results. Therefore, I don't blame Microsoft for this approach until their fan base steps it up. Look, I am a staunch criticizer of Xbox for a variety of things, for their lack of transparency, flip-flopping, and all the other stuff. But it's time for the fan base to step it up. Across the street, yeah, they're talking to console war and their zealot stuff right over there but again once they're done done with that they're balancing it with gameplay and they're showing you why quote unquote their games are better they're understanding this the decisions that are being made that are um elevating the product and the services that's why they're talking about console sales because they understand that the console business is the biggest um platform launcher between the two you can talk about cloud and PC all you want until those become fathomable realities that outdo the console business. It's just smoke and mirrors. Right now, console is where it's at. And console exclusivity is something that Xbox can use in its advantage at the right time, but only after they recoup they, they responsibly recoup their finances on these big purchases that can't sway things in their favor. But in addition to that, if you're gonna play K to a fan base, the fan base has to do something positive for you. And I can't think of a single thing that this fan base that they've been placating to doing positive for the brand. Again, just to understand what I'm talking about, go back to the end results of the Bethesda deal. How many how many Xbox consoles does Starfield sell? How many systemic Game Pass subscribers are there now because of Starfield? What did Redfall do? Like, come on, stop it. With that said, 
Xbox gamer or rabid Xbox gamer, you need a better business acumen. You need patience in the appropriate areas. And for crying out loud, do more gaming. The service is only $10 a month. It is ridiculous that me, again, a staunch criticizer of Xbox, who happens to like PC Game Pass, I got more gaming footage on Xbox Game Pass than your average Xbox creator. That is absurd. Show off the show off the platform. Show off the console. Make it cool to fellow gamers. All right? Less lip service, more gaming for crying out loud. And with that said, that's my screaming, <laughs> spitting all over my pop filter take. <laughs> Enough about what I got to say. What are your thoughts? Drop them in the comment section below and let's keep this conversation alive. With that said, if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you to, again, geeks, cloud dosage, hard knock digital culture, and more. With that said, you have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.